and but I will talk more details on Friday. So today, and I'm going to end up this class with optic mirror and the divergent lens. The um the class before the Thanksgiving, I talked about the uh, convergent lens, and I said that the convergent lens and uh, could be and uh, drawn by the optical pass uh, with three special rays to determine the image. And we talk about the lens equations. If we know the object distance, we know the focal length, then we can solve the image distance. But before we start the new thing, uh, let's review this lens equation. If we have, a, we have the convergent lens, and this convergent lens has a main axis, main axis and they have a periodic focal point this is a focal point this is a two times the focal point and if we put the object um, here then we can draw the optical path the light path will be three special rays and i pick up two rays the first one is a ray that is parallel to the main axis. And the, the ray that is parallel to the main axis is going to turn and go through the focal point. This is first ray. The second ray is, let me use another color. The second ray is a line that penetrates through the center of the lens. Then the direction doesn't change the second ray. The third ray will be the ray that through the focal point. If it's through the focal point, if it's through the focal point, then the outgoing ray is going to be parallel to the main axis. So the three rays will intersect at the same point. Same point here. And this point is image point image point and you can find that the direction of the image and the direction of the object are inverted so this image is an inverted image and if we put a screen on the right side of the lens we will find a sharpest image on the screen so this image is real real image And we can also measure the object distance and the image distance. We have object distance, check distance, this P, image distance, this Q. Then from the lens of lens equation, we have one over p plus one over q equal one over f. And you can find that if the p is larger than 2f, by solving this equation, we can get the q is smaller than f. Uh, hold on, smaller than 2f. Okay. Then we can just uh, um, figure out the magnification. Um, I use absolute value. Uh, usually there's a negative Q over P, but um, I, I'd rather use absolute value. Then I can figure out if this is larger or this is smaller. So I use absolute value. P, Q over P. Then in this case, we will have Q smaller than 2F and P larger than 2F, we have the value smaller than one. So this is a, a small image. So in this case, you can find if the object distance is larger than two times of the focal length, then I will get, uh, I will get, get a small distance for the image. So the image is small. And if I put the object distance is 
more than 2f, but larger than 1f, then we can solve the uh, length equation to get the q is larger than 2f. Yeah, symmetrical. And in this case, we can track the magnification. The magnification will be q over p. And that will be larger than one. So in this case, I will get a magnified image, which is large image, larger image, and there's also an inverted image and a real image. So when we use a projector with the rather to put the uh, the PowerPoint slides and the lens with a distance of f to 2f and if this is a camera we would rather to put the object is larger than 2f so depend on the application we adjust the um, object distance and there is a very special case that is if the object distance is smaller than 1f. This is a quiz for the, uh, this is a last quiz problem. And we have a lens, we have a focal point here. And we put the object uh, close to the lens and the P you know, is smaller than the focal length, then we can trace the optical path. One rays go through the focal point, the second ray go through the center of the lens. And you find that these two rays, they don't intersect on the right region, but they intersect on the left region. So if we trace back the optical rays, is back, then you can find that they intersect on the left region. And that means if we look through this way, with our human eyes, then our eyes has a lens. The lens will fo focus the divergent rays on the retina. So it seems like that there is a object here and we look at the purple object. So the purple object is called the virtual image. So virtual image means if we put a screen on the left side, if we put a screen here, on the screen, there's no image. We can see the image because our eyes can focus uh, the divergent rays on the retina. That's the reason we can see the image. But if we put a screen um, on the image play, the image location uh, on the screen, there's no image on the screen. And if we check the lens equation, the lens equation set one over P plus one over Q equivalent to one over F, you will find that um, because of P, is smaller than f. So one over p is larger than one over f. Then we will solve the q, get negative image distance. Negative image distance means that the image and the object are on the same side of the lens. So if they are on the both both side, then um, both P and Q are positive. But if Q is a negative, that means they are on the one side. In this case, if Q is negative, that means the image is virtual. Virtual image is upright image, not an inverted image. And the image is magnified is larger. So we use such of the lens to magnify the text. So if some uh, senior people has very poor eyesight, 
they just put a conversion lens above the textbook and they can read the text um, carefully. So this is uh, the review for the conversion lens. Then let me go to the divergent lens. Divergent lens has an opposite shape comparing with the convergent lens. So if we have a lens with the center thinner than the edge, the center is thinner than the edge. This kind of lens is called divergent lens because if we have light rays parallel and penetrates the, the lens, the outgoing rays will diverge. So they never focus at one point. So if we have parallel rays and propagate through this um, concave lens, then the outgoing rays um, just like a radiation. But if we trace back the outgoing rays, trace back ways, and we just draw the uh, reverse uh, reverse lines of this rays, it seems like that they have the common source. They the source. Seems like that there is a point that generate a radiative lines um, and this radiative rays um, penetrate the, the lens and go to the outward. So we call this, uh, this source as a virtual focal point. And from the virtual focal point to the lens, this distance is called, called focal, focal length. Focal length. And we use little f to represent the focal length from here to the lens. This is f. And to distinguish the virtual focal length and the real focal lens, we define the virtual focal lens is a negative number. Okay, so this is called divergent. And if it's a convergent lens, that's positive. That's a difference. And if we have object in front of the divergent lens, F, F, we put an object here. Then how does image look like? We can just draw um, the optical path. First one, parallel ray. The parallel ray is going to diverge, right? So it looks like um, the F is the source. So we connect the F with uh, uh, with the uh, parallel rays and it goes in this way. This is the first special ray. The second one is the ray that penetrates through the center of the lens. The direction doesn't change. And you can find that these two rays, they don't intersect on the right region. But if we look through this way, we can see the image at here. It seems like that this point generate two rays and it diverge, then it, it is focused by the human's eyes. So the image is here, we just go back and this image is virtual image. And the virtual image are always upright. So the application for the divergent rays is the security lens. So if you can find the door, the security door, and this door usually have a lens on the door and a small lens. So if there's someone knocks the door, 
then you can look at the person through this lens. This lens is a divergent lens. Yeah, because the divergent lens always gives you the upright image. If we put a convergent lens here, then sometimes if the person um, from this lens is too far away, then you will get an inverted image. So we use a divergent lens here, divergent lens on the door. Then when you look through the divergent lens, you can see a small person and you can see the person's face clearly. Okay, and this mirror, uh, this lens also applied for the equation, lenses equation, one over P plus one over Q equals one over F. And in this case, we have the P is always a positive number and the F is always a negative value. So to put these two values into this equation, we will get the Q is always negative. If the Q is always negative, that means the image is always virtual and always upright. Okay, this is very important. And we never get a real image by using a converge, uh, by using a divergent lens. Okay, so um, let's do some practice to understand what's going on for this two kind of lens. So I'm going to the machine physics and due tomorrow, but that's okay. I can talk about this uh, today. And here, let me check the number of the problem. I think it should be the number three. The number three, uh-oh. I have to re-log in. Hold on. Give me a second and we're logging. So here, number three. Uh, number three said there is a convergent lens. Convergent lens and the object is seven centimeter in front of the convergent lens. So we have the object distance is seven centimeter. And we know the focal lens is 13 centimeter. And we are going to determine where the image is. Determine the image <coughs> Excuse me. So to determine the image, we use the image distance in the uh, lens equation. So we have one over P plus one over Q equivalent to one over F. And let's see, to solve the image distance, we use one over F minus one over P, then we inverted this value. So we have one over one over thirteen centimeter minus one over seven centimeter. Then you can find that this will give you a negative value. So we get negative fifteen centimeter. So that's that's that makes sense because the uh, object distance is smaller than one time the focal length. Seven centimeter smaller than. This. 13 centimeter. So if we draw the light path, that will be a lens here. The focal length 
focal points are here, 13 centimeter, and the object is here, seven centimeter. And the image will be here. And this is a virtual image, right? Because it's negative value. We have 15 centimeter away from the lens. And because this is a virtual image, the, the image should be upright. Okay. So let's check the second question. If the image upright or inverted, this is upright. So the inverted image are the real image and the virtual image are upright image. Let me move to the next question. Um, this is uh, a question asking about the divergent lens. The divergent lens, the only difference is the focal point. The focal lens is a negative number. So we have to be careful by using this uh, lens equation. So the object distance is 19 and the focal point is negative 11. So image distance is equivalent to 1 over f minus 1 over p inverted. And we will have 1 over negative 11 minus 1 over uh, 90. So we get a negative value of 7 centimeters. Uh, after we have this number, let's determine uh, how does the image look like. So we can draw the optical path. This is a divergent lens. This is a virtual point, virtual focal point. And we have the focal point is 11 centimeter. And object is 19 centimeter. 19 centimeter. And with the images, image is negative seven. Negative means the object and the image are on the same side. So negative seven here. Negative seven. Negative seven. So this is a positive, uh, this is a negative value. So I have upright image and I have a, a virtual image. Second question, is this image upright or emerge? This is upright because this is a virtual image. Okay, next question. I, think I have a question for that one. Yeah, hold on, uh, give me a second. Yeah, so go ahead. What does it mean if the focal point is negative? Like, why is it negative? Okay. Uh, so we use a negative value and a positive value to distinguish convergent lens and the divergent lens. If this is a convergent lens, if this is a convergent lens, then the focal point is a real. This is a real focal point. That means we have parallel rays and they focus at one point. So we know this is real and this is a positive. But if we have a divergent lens, it, the, the rays diverge. There's no focal point. But if we trace back this rays, it seems like there is a focal point. So this is a virtual focal point. So we define this focal lens is negative. And the reason we define a negative value because we want to use this equation. We find that if, if all this focal point or the focal lens are positive, then the equation is only applied for the convergent lens. And if we want to use this equation to solve the case in the divergent lens, we have to change the equation by like this. 
This is for the divergence. This is when we define the f is positive. So we want to combine these two equations. So we just put the negative sign into the focal lens, in the divergent lens. Then we combine these two equations. We only use this equation. Then the difference is the convergent lens, we use a positive f. If for the divergent lens, we use negative f. So that's the reason we have positive and negative. This is just a definition. Okay, thank you. The next question will be mirror. Uh, we have a convex mirror and we are going to determine where the image is. So let's talk about the mirror first. Mirror. The mirror and the lens actually are similar, I think. So the first one, we're talking about the convex mirror. Convex mirror. Convex mirror, so we have this the convex mirror. And the light coming this way. And the mirror will reflect all the rays. So we can draw the, the normal line at each point. The normal line for this one is this one. The normal line for the third ray is this one. This is a normal line on this interface. So the outgoing ray will be like this. And this is a parallel line, so it goes, goes back in this way. So you can find that if we have parallel rays strike the convex mirror, the, out, the reflective rays will diverge. If we have more rays coming this way, it goes in this way. It goes in this way. So all the rays coming this way will diverge. And why this is useful? Because if we trace back this reflective rays, it seems like there is a light source on the back of the mirror. This light source generates a radiation and this rays go to a different direction. So we call this this point as a focal point. And if we have a concave mirror, this will be different. Concave mirror look like this. So one race, second race, third race, then they go in this way, then we can draw the normal line each one, the normal line is this one, the normal line is this one. Then the reflective rays for each one will be this way, this way. So all these rays will focus at this point. That means if I have a concave mirror and parallel rays strike in this way, then this rays will focus at the point. And this focal point to the mirror, the center of the mirror, is called the focal length. And this is f. This is also f, but we define this f is negative. We define this f is positive. Okay, so if this is a real focal point, that's a positive value. If this is a virtual focal point, that's a negative value. And both this case could be used into the lens equation. Lens equation said, if we have object in front of the lens, now in this case, I change the lens into mirror. So the mirror said, if we have object in front of the mirror, the mirror will give us an image. 
and the image distance and object distance focal length apply for this relation. And for the con convex mirror, the F is negative. For the concave mirror, F is positive. Okay, then let's see, the P is always positive. Then for the different mirror, the Q could be positive or sometimes it could be negative, depends on the relation between P and F. Um, so we can draw the optical path to find where the image is. So the first one, let me talk about the convex mirror. This is optical main axis. This is F. This is F. So I put the object here. Then let's draw the special ray to determine where the image is. The first ray is always be the parallel ray. And, and this parallel ray is going to reflect by the mirror. And we can connect the focal point with the striking point and it goes in this way. So this is the first ray. The second ray will be the ray that strikes the center of the mirror. Then the reflective ray will be the same angle, but goes down. These two angles should be equivalent. Okay, then you can find that on the left region, these two outgoing rays never intersect on the left region. But if we trace back the right region, it seems like that these two rays intersect at here. So that means we can get a virtual image. Virtual image here. And you can find that this virtual image is smaller than the object. So in this case, we can get in the concave mirror or convex mirror. image is always virtual. Virtual means upright. Upright and it's always smaller. Then we can use this mirror to do some application. That means um, if we want to see uh, the corner, for example, there's a, there's a street and this street has a very huge building block the, uh, the view and the driver coming this way and the driver cannot see um, the region behind the building. So we put a convex mirror here. The convex mirror can concentrate the object in this direction to the driver's eyes. So the driver can see what's going on um, behind the building from this mirror. And the, re the reason we use a convex mirror and not a plane mirror is that the convex mirror can uh, make the object smaller. If the image is smaller, that means in the same area of the mirror, if this is a plan mirror, this is a convex mirror, they have the same area. The plan mirror give us the magnification equal to one. So uh, how large the object, how large is uh, the image? So we get the magnified is one, but the convex mirror give the magnification smaller than one. So the same region, we get more object. Get more object into this, this, this region. So if we have the smaller image, that means we can get more information from a confined area. So that's why we use a convex mirror and on the corner of the road, then to show uh, the area that the driver cannot see. And I have um, some image to show what's going on here. So if you just uh, Google 
the convex mirror. You can find many convex mirror around the corner in the building and on the street to concentrate the object. Then in the mirror, you can see all the objects distorted, but you can see there's something here. And all the objects become smaller. So this is the application. And let's go back to the equation. And in this case, we always get a negative image distance and the image is always uh, virtual. So if we use the concave mirror, if we have a concave mirror, concave mirror, and we have the main axis, this is focal point, this is the second focal point. Then we put the object here. Then let's draw the optical path. First array is parallel to the main axis. Then it goes through the focal point. The second one will be the ray that strike the center of the mirror. Then the reflective ray will be the same angle and the third ray we can draw is the ray that goes through the focal point, then the outgoing ray will be parallel to the main axis. Okay, so the three rays uh, intersect at this point. So we have a real image. And this image is inverted. And if we check the magnification is Q over P, you can see the Q is smaller than P, so this is smaller than one. So this is a smaller image. But if we put the object into here, between two F and F, we will get a magnified image. So the concave mirror Should be treated as a convergence. A convergence. And the uh, convex mirror should be treated as a divergence. Okay, in this case, um, for the first. Uh, uh, the, for this mirror, the concave mirror and the convergent lens, they have the positive F. For the convex mirror and the, the divergent lens, they have negative focal lens. So they have the similar point and they just, uh, the difference is the lens is penetration and the mirror is a reflective image. Okay, so this is the mirror and let me go back to the mushroom physics. I'll just go to this. So the mirror set, the convex mirror, focal lens is negative 19 and object distance is 30 centimeter. And we're going to determine um, the image distance. Okay, the image distance set S, one over P plus one over Q is equivalent to one over F. So F is negative 19 and the P is 30. So we can solve the Q is negative 12. So that means, uh, hold on, this is a convex mirror and the object is 30. And the focal point is 90. And the image will be 12. 12 is here. So this image, this is the upright image, and this is the virtual image, smaller image. Okay, do you have other questions? Then we have uh, several minutes left. 
I'm going to talk about the uh, two lens system. If we have two lens, two lens system, and suppose if we have two convergent lens, and put together and can make a telescope, right? Or microscope, or any other scope. And the, um, the principle for these two lens is that we can put their focal point at the same place. And we can uh, just terminate the parallel rays. So that means if we put object here, we want to know where the image is. The image is here, or the image is here. Is the virtual image or real image is uh, this is a uh, upright image or a inverted image we don't know depends on the relation the the location of the lens and also where the object is but to determine the image we just follow the rule the rule is the image of the first lens is object of the second lens. We just follow this rule. So we can draw the optical path one by one. Suppose the lens is here, focal point here, focal point here, focal point here. This is the focal point for the first one, this is the focal point for the second one. The main axis is this one. Okay, so let's draw the optical path one by one. First one is the parallel rays go through the focal point. The second one is through the focal point, then parallel. So this is the image of the first lens. So the image of first lens actually is object of the second lens. So it's second. Then we're going to generate a rays through the focal point. And the second one will be this one. So we will get the image here. So that's easy, right? If we have um, different uh, lens, then we still follow the same rule. For example, if we have one convergent lens and one divergent lens, And we still have the main axis the focal point here. So the first one, the focal point for the second one. Here. And let's draw the optical path. Optical path, if we have the optical path here, the objects here, then we draw the first array in this way. Second ray, this one, then we have image here. And the image for the first lens is object for the second lens. Then let's draw the first ray is parallel and we connect with the focal point to the striking point, then it goes to diverging distance. This is the first ray. The second ray will be the ray pan through the center of the lens rays pass this one and these two rays intersect here so the image is here a small image okay i think on the uh on the final exam you were uh, asked to draw the optical path for the double lens system so please prepare the ruler when you're doing the exam and don't just use your hand to draw the line. I, I hope you can draw the lines by using a ruler and the ruler can trace all the rays straight and it make your uh, diagram neat. Okay.
So I think this is all the information I want to talk today. We talk about the lens, the equation of the lens, and also the mirror, concave mirror, divergent mirror, and also the two lens system. Um, this is, uh, I think, it's all the information is optics. So if you think um, this is very interesting, um, you can learn more from the textbook, how we use the two lens system to make a telescope and how we change the magnification and how we uh, get more uh, accurate image in the optical system. So this is uh, uh, the optics. You have other questions? Uh, just a really quick question. The, yeah. um, on the exam, are we only need to have to draw two of the special rays or do we need to draw all three? Um, two is enough. So okay. you need to figure out where the intersect is. If right. you determine the intersect, you only need the two rays. Right, okay, thank you. Okay, on Friday, I'm going to review a previous exam. I haven't decided uh, which one I'm going to review, but I will tell you tomorrow. I will email you and before the class, just read some of the questions. And if you have more questions, you can ask me. And on Friday, we don't have quits. So um, you don't need to worry about that. 